As the seasons change, so do our wardrobes. The sweaters, gloves, hats, and scarves we depended on for warmth in the winter are often thrown into the nearest container and tossed into some out of the way place during the summer. Storage is an important component in the care and maintenance of clothing. However, it is something that is frequently overlooked until a problem occurs. Proper storage can and does reduce the time and money involved in upkeep and prolongs the life of your treasured hand knits. If you're interested in knowing how to store your knitwear based on scientific research, techniques that are based on those used by expert textile conservators at museums, but which you can easily replicate at home, then keep on watching to learn some tips for properly storing your hand knits. Hello everyone and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. I've wanted to do a video on the topic of storing your hand knits for a while now. It's a little bit late in the season, at least for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere who are in the middle of summer right now. But some of you might be like me, a bit delayed in getting your hand knits put away for the summer. So I figured why not just go ahead and get the information out there. Besides, it might be a good time to change the way you might be storing some of your seasonal items like sweaters, mittens, and shawls if necessary. In preparing for this show, I noticed that there is so much misleading information out there and a lot of conflicting information as well. So my tactic was to read numerous scholarly journal articles on proper clothing storage. I also reviewed the practices for preserving textiles used by museums like the Smithsonian and the American Textile History Museum, as well as textile conservators like the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the U.S. National Park Service. What I've done for you today is developed a list of storage procedures that are designed to keep your hand knits safe from damage by things like ultraviolet radiation, microorganisms, insects, rodents, and improper storage. I'm going to talk about three aspects of storing hand knits, and they are number one, choosing and preparing the storage area, number two, selecting an appropriate storage container, and number three, preparing the hand knits for storage. So let's get right into it. To start with, let's discuss the storage area. The place where you're going to put your clothing items needs to have four characteristics, clean, cool, dark, and dry. So the first thing is clean, clean the storage area. Be sure to thoroughly clean it at least once a year. That means carefully vacuum, dust, and wipe down the space where you'll be keeping your hand knits. And what I'm talking about here is the room or the closet or the corner of the room, wherever the space is. Second, the storage area needs to be cool. Extreme temperatures can damage your items, so choose a place that's not likely to be exposed to heat. Studies show that heat can discolor textiles, often turning fabrics yellow, gray, or even pink. Also, when wool is exposed to heat, it changes the peptides and amino acids in the wool fibers, weakening those fibers. Ideally, it is suggested that clothing should be stored in conditions where the temperature is between 65 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 18 to 21 degrees Celsius. The thing to keep in mind here is that places like attics, garages, and basements might not have the temperature control that you have inside your main living areas of the home. So these might not be the best areas for storing your hand knits. In those cases, a better option might be a closet or a chest of drawers that you could use for seasonal storage. The bottom line is make sure it's a cool area where you store your textiles. And third, keep your knitwear in a dark location. Stored textiles should never be exposed to light because the natural fibers are damaged by the sun's ultraviolet radiation and even the light rays of indoor fixtures. In fact, according to archivists, the number one danger to textiles is light, both natural and artificial. 
Light causes fading and eventually damages the fibers themselves. That means fabrics left exposed to light will deteriorate over time. As an example, I read one study where raw wool was exposed to daily sunlight for 11 weeks. At the end of that period, the wool was measured in terms of its color and chemical composition. The results of the study showed that sunlight exposure caused pronounced yellowing of the wool and changed the copper and calcium levels in the wool fibers. And these changes in wool's mineral levels are thought to be one precursor of the fibers starting to deteriorate. And that was only after 11 days. There are also dozens of studies showing that fabrics have a tendency to fade when exposed to light. So yeah, light is not a friend of textiles and therefore it's best to store your hand knits away from any light sources. And fourth, the storage area needs to be dry. Damp and humid areas are optimal environments for moth breeding as well as the growth of mold and mildew. Although wool is resistant to microorganisms like mold and mildew, it's not completely immune to them. And other natural fibers like cotton are extremely susceptible to attack by mold and mildew. Under the right conditions, mold and mildew can form in just one day. It almost goes without saying that your storage area should be protected from water. If your basement gets a lot of water in it when it rains, that's obviously not a good spot to store your garments. The ideal relative humidity in your textile storage area should be between 40 and 50%. In these conditions, excessive drying is avoided and mold and mildew growth caused by excess moisture is discouraged. Did you know that mold and mildew can weaken and destroy natural fibers? they can actually cause holes in your fabric. This is why it's imperative that the storage area for your textiles be kept dry. You definitely don't want mold and mildew to grow on your hand knits. Storing them in a dry place will also help prevent those stale, musty smells that can permeate your clothes while in storage. And finally, Textile fibers are susceptible to expansion and contraction from humidity fluctuations, and this movement can cause the fibers to degrade. So you want to shoot for a stable relative humidity of 40 to 50 percent in your clothing storage area, and this can be achieved by using a humidifier or dehumidifier as necessary. Now you can easily measure the relative humidity in your storage area by using a hygrometer like this one. You can get these for $10 or less on Amazon or at Walmart, I'm sure a lot of other places as well. So the bottom line here is to make sure your storage area is dry. Okay, so to review, the storage area needs to be clean, cool, dark, and dry. Now let's turn to appropriate storage containers for your hand knits. And I think this is where a lot of us have problems because we're not really sure how to protect our hand knits. And it seems like the best way to keep moths away and to keep our garments dry is to place them in plastic bags or bins. This is fast and easy and doesn't cost very much. Plus we don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about it. We just throw our stuff in the bin and then leave it there until we need it again in the winter. But storing our cherished hand knits in plastic is a bad idea, according to textile experts. There are numerous problems with storing textiles in plastics. First, textile fibers need to be in an environment where there's some air movement. You might have heard that wool needs to breathe. And what this means is that wool is able to absorb and release water vapor into the air. This is one of the amazing characteristics of wool. As the temperature becomes cooler, wool absorbs moisture. And as that moisture is absorbed, the wool fibers release energy in the form of heat, which helps offset the drop in air temperature. As the air around the wool fibers is heated, the wool releases the moisture it's absorbed. And this is how wool fibers wick moisture away from your skin and release it into the air, keeping your skin dry. And this process is what makes wool fabrics comfortable to wear in both warm and cold weather. 
This process is also why wool is resistant to mold and mildew. Moisture passes through the wool fibers in the form of water vapor, so the wet conditions that allow mold and mildew to grow aren't present. But think about what happens when you keep wool in sealed plastic, or any fiber for that matter. Any moisture that's, that it's absorbed will just sit there and become a potential breeding ground for mold and mildew. Fungal spores are everywhere. Remember the leftover food you sealed up tightly and put in the refrigerator? If you leave it there long enough, when you open it up, it's gonna be full of mold. And I'm afraid a similar process can happen with your stored textiles, whether it's wool or cotton or anything else. And cotton, as I said, is especially susceptible to mold and mildew. Even if the fabric doesn't feel wet to the touch, it's holding some moisture in the fibers just from the relative humidity in the air. It's also likely to have fungal spores on it because they're just everywhere. So if you put that fabric into a sealed plastic bag, eventually you're gonna end up with mold. And as I said, mold and mildew can damage and decay your fabrics, causing holes to form. If you store hand knits in sealed plastic bags, you can also end up with musty smelling garments. The second issue with plastics is that many of them are chemically unstable. This means that the chemicals that they're made from can migrate to the surface over time, leaving the material tacky, waxy, or brittle. Plastic can also warp, crack, and crumble. And this process is accelerated in environmental conditions with high humidity, high or fluctuating temperatures, and bright light. Many plastics also emit gases, which can increase deterioration of the container. You might have experienced these gases if you've ever opened a brand new plastic bin and were just overwhelmed by the chemical smell inside. And of course, those gases can leach into your textiles and cause damage there. So for all these reasons, you never want to fully seal up your hand knits in plastic, including Ziploc bags, and vacuum seal bags like space bags. If you really feel the need to store your, your textiles in plastic, then plastic bins are better than Ziploc bags or space bags. They're better because most bins don't seal up airtight, which allows the fibers to breathe at least a little bit. You definitely want to avoid the ones with gaskets, that rubbery material that goes between the top of the bin and the lid that seal the bins up so they're waterproof. There are many archival quality plastic boxes made from corrugated polypropylene. They are archival quality because the plastic doesn't contain additives and doesn't acidify over time. They provide water resistance, although they're not completely waterproof because the lids don't have an airtight seal. They can also protect the items inside from things like dust and smoke. This is an acid-free polypropylene storage box that I bought from the container store. These are called sweater boxes and cost about $6.50 each. And these are nice boxes. They have, they're sturdy and they have a lid that, that latches firmly. They also have little feet on the bottom corners to make it easy to stack them. Again, these are not completely waterproof, but that's good, so there will be some air movement inside the box, and any humidity that enters the box will not adversely affect its contents. Something else you can do to help out the situation is putting one or a few of these silica packets in the box with your garments. They will absorb moisture, which will decrease the likelihood of mold and mildew growing, but you do have to remember to change them every so often. If you're looking for polypropylene storage boxes, look for the resin identification code or recycle code number five, which is usually on the bottom of the box. The take home message here is that a lot of readily available plastics don't make the best containers for storing your hand knits, especially if they're completely sealed up and airtight. But if they're not airtight and they are archival quality, that is actually a better situation for your hand knits. Another popular storage container for hand knits is wooden trunks or cedar chests. It's a common notion that 
Cedar makes an ideal container for textiles. Cedar chests are lovely and they certainly smell good. However, it might surprise you to find out that storage units made out of wood, any kind of wood, are actually harmful to textiles. Textiles should never be stored in contact with unsealed wood due to the high acid content of the wood. Dozens of studies on textile storage have shown that acids and resins can leach out onto objects in contact with the wood, causing damage and disintegration of the fibers. Here's an example. This is a picture of a jacket that has been hanging on a wooden hanger. And you can clearly see that the areas on the jacket that were touched by the hanger have been stained and damaged by the acid from the wood. Obviously, you don't want something like this to happen with your precious hand knits. But if you do have your hand knit stored in a cedar chest or something similar, don't despair because there's an easy fix. It's recommended that you simply line the trunk with a clean cotton sheet that you've just washed, but don't use any bleach or fabric softener on it. What you want to do is put the sheet in between the raw wood and your hand knits. You can also place items into clean cotton pillowcases and then put them into the cedar chest. Another option for wrapping your textiles is to use archival grade tissue paper, though this is probably more important for longer term storage as opposed to seasonal storage, but I thought I would mention it here just for informational purposes. Now, you might notice I said archival grade tissue paper, which is a special kind of tissue paper. You definitely don't want to use regular tissue paper or other regular paper, including cardboard. The problem is that regular paper deteriorates very quickly and produces acid that can contaminate the materials that it touches. So you might have heard of something called acid-free paper, and that is archival grade paper. Acid-free papers are made with a special kind of wood cellulose, so they last longer and don't generate acid. And these will protect your garments from discoloring and getting brittle. Now, there are two types of archival grade acid-free tissue paper. Um, this one is unbuffered and this one is buffered. The difference between these is that the buffered paper is infused with an alkaline substance to counteract any acids that might form in the material. And the unbuffered paper doesn't have this property. Buffered paper is a little stiffer and unbuffered paper is usually softer. So which one should you use? Well, it depends on the type of fiber that you're wrapping. Cellulose fibers such as cotton, flax, linen, and other plant-based fibers do best in buffered paper. On the other hand, any textiles containing animal fibers like wool, angora, cashmere, and silk are best stored in unbuffered paper. And in cases where the garment is made from a mix of animal and cellulose fibers, like a cotton wool blend, or when the fiber content is unknown, then it's recommended you used unbuffered paper. Whichever paper is appropriate for the fiber content of your garments protects them from any acidity that develops in the storage container. So again, use the buffered paper for cotton and the unbuffered paper for wool. And I bought both the buffered and unbuffered archival tissue paper on Amazon. The buffered one was $11.60 for 12 24 by 36 inch sheets. The unbuffered one was $9.28 for 12 30 by 40 inch sheets. Some things to avoid are the tacky drawer liners and contact paper because the adhesive can attract bugs. Silverfish, cockroaches, and crickets love the adhesive, so you never want it where you are storing your hand knits. All right, so plastic and wood are not the best storage containers for your hand knits, but you can make them work. So you might wonder, if plastic and wood are inferior, then what are the other options? What are the best ways to store my hand knits? Well, one excellent option is bags made out of cotton, muslin, or canvas. These are lightweight fabrics that will allow the textile fibers inside to breathe. They'll also keep insects away and block dust from settling on your garments. Now, I have an example here that I got from the container store. 
This is a sweater bag that is made out of cotton twill fabric and it has a clear polyethylene vinyl top and front with a zipper closing. The nice thing about this type of bag is that it will protect your garments from dust, keep insects out, and the cotton twill is breathable so moisture won't get trapped, uh, avoiding damage from mold and mildew. Plus the clear top allows you to easily see what's inside. I got a package of two sweater bags from the container store for $12.99. Another great option for storing your knitwear is this drop front sweater box that I also got from the container store. And by the way, I have no affiliation with the container store and this video is not sponsored at all. These are just some storage solutions I ordered and paid for myself. So this sweater box has a heavy duty fiberboard frame that is all covered in a cotton linen blend fabric. The front door is clear plastic so you can see what's in the box. It opens from the top down so you could stack these on a shelf and easily access what's inside through the door. The door has a magnetic closure which keeps it firmly closed. This box is very sturdy and has plenty of room for sweaters, shawls, or whatever you want to store in it. Again, this will keep the dust and insects out, plus it's breathable, so it won't trap moisture inside. Now, these drop front sweater boxes are a bit pricey. They cost around $30, but I just noticed that right now they're on sale for $21 a piece, which is a 30% savings, so this would be a great time to pick them up if you're interested, and I'm not sure how long they're gonna be on sale, though. Another archival material that is considered to be the highest quality textile storage material available is Tyvek. Tyvek is a brand name proprietary material used in the best archival textile bags. It is 100% acid free and extremely dense, meaning that it can keep out contaminants much better than something like a cotton sheet. Tyvek is awesome because it's both strong and porous. It's tear resistant, puncture resistant, water repellent, breathable, and has a neutral pH. It allows for the passage of water vapor and air circulation, but at the same time provides an effective barrier to both insects and microorganisms. That means that garments in a Tyvek bag are protected from clothes moths and other pests, as well as mold and mildew. For all these reasons, textile conservators love Tyvek. Storing your hand knits in Tyvek bags on shelves or in a chest of drawers is a fabulous option. I would just be sure to label the bags so you know what's inside. The biggest issues with Tyvek bags are that they're kind of hard to find and they're kind of expensive. Most of the Tyvek storage bags I found online are garment bags made for preserving garments like wedding dresses. So that seems kind of big. You probably wouldn't need that large of a bag for storing your hand knits. And those Tyvek bags can cost $40 just for one of them. But you can buy Tyvek fabric, and I got this package from Amazon for around $18 uh, for one meter of Tyvek, which is about three, a little over three yards. So that's about $5.60 a yard, which is very reasonable for fabric. So if you were so inclined, you could make your own bags with this Tyvek fabric. I think the best strategy would be to make a zippered bag so that it would securely close. And you can make bags in the exact sizes you needed. The Tyvek would be excellent for protecting your hand knits from insects, mold, mildew, water, light, and dust. So if you really want to use the top of the line protection and what archivists would recommend, I think Tyvek would be the way to go. Now I should mention here that Tyvek used in archival applications should not be confused with the Tyvek house wrap that's used in the building industry. Tyvek house wrap contains additives and coatings to make it suitable for building purposes and those types of finishes are not something you want to wrap your hand knits in. So don't buy Tyvek at the hardware store. Okay, so 
So far, I've talked about your storage area and some ideas for storage containers you could use to protect your hand knits while they're packed away. Now let's turn to a discussion of how to prepare your hand knits themselves for being stored for the season or even longer term. The biggest tip that I can give you to protect your hand knits from bugs and damage in storage is to always wash them before you store them. Insects are attracted to stains, body oils, perspiration, urine, you know, things like that. So cleaning your items means that insects will be less likely to take up residence in your sweaters. In washing your garments before storing them, it's very important to use an appropriate cleanser for the type of fabric or fiber that you're washing. And you really want to use something that's going to clean the garment, not just rinse it out and make it smell good. Last year, I did a test of the effectiveness of a number of different wool washes to see which ones would be good at removing stains and actually cleaning wool. And I'll link that video below in case you missed it and are interested in seeing it. Anyway, in that test, the top two best wool cleaners were this one, the Laundress Wool and Cashmere Shampoo, and this one, Kookaburra Wash. Now the Laundress uh, Wool and Cashmere Shampoo comes in a 16 ounce bottle and costs around $20. The Kookaburra Wash also comes in a 16 ounce bottle and costs around $12. Based on my test results, I highly recommend these for cleaning your garments made out of wool and other animal fibers prior to storing them. For cotton and other cellulose fibers, as well as synthetics, I recommend this signature detergent from the Laundress. This is a one liter bottle and costs around $20. The main idea here is that you want to really clean your hand knits to remove food stains, perfume residue, perspiration, skin oils, anything that is left in the garment from wearing it. Even if you didn't spill something on it, it's still going to have traces of things like dirt, body lotions, sweat, even if you can't directly see those things. And those are the things that insects like clothes moths will be attracted to. Clothes moths and other insects are not attracted to clean fibers. Now, if you're dealing with stubborn stains that are difficult to remove, the Laundress also makes this stain solution that is safe to use on all types of fabric, even delicate heirlooms. You only need like one drop of it for stain removal, so this bottle will last a long, long time. So I would recommend this if you are struggling to get a set in stain out of your garment. And this stain solution costs around $12 for a 16 ounce bottle. And just to be clear, I have no affiliation with the Laundress, nor is this video sponsored by them. They have no idea who I am. I've just been really happy with their products since I was turned on to them last year in my wool wash test. So that's what I use for thoroughly cleaning hand knits before storing them. Now, there are a few important things to remember when going through the process of laundering your hand knits. One is to avoid using products like bleach, fabric softener, sizing, or starch. These products can potentially harm your textiles. For example, bleach will damage wool. And things like sizing and starch attract bugs like silverfish, cockroaches, and crickets. And they will all eat natural plant fibers like cotton and linen. Mildew also likes starch. So just wash and rinse your garments and then let them air dry completely. This will allow good air circulation and remove as much moisture as possible before you put the item in storage. Another aspect of preparing your garments for seasonal or longer term storage is that it's usually best to store hand knits flat with as few folds as possible. As you're no doubt aware, hanging knits on hangers will stretch them out and potentially damage the fabric. So storing them flat is a much better idea. If at all possible, store them without folding them at all. Now some items, small items like mittens, you can probably leave entirely flat. Um, some other items like socks and scarves, you could roll up so they don't have any creases. For bigger things like sweaters and shawls, you're probably going to have to fold them, 
but try to have as few folds as possible. The issue with folding garments is that the folds can weaken the fibers, especially the longer they stay creased. So another thing you can do is periodically refold your garments into another configuration. You can also take some of that um, archival tissue paper that I talked about earlier and use that to cushion the folded area. You just kind of crumple up some of that tissue paper and place it in the folds so that the fabric kind of wraps around it instead of having a harsh crease. But again, remember to use the archival tissue paper and not regular tissue paper. So in sum, storing your garments flat, rolled up, or lightly folded is usually the best for hand knits. And careful cleaning will go a long way to prevent damage to your hand knits while they're in storage. Again, things like perspiration, spilled food, body oils, perfumes, and lotions can cause stains later on, even if they're not visible at the time of storage. And as I said, these residues uh, create a food source for moths and other pests. And I'll be I'll actually be talking about that in my next video, so stay tuned for answers to your questions and concerns about yarn eating insects and protecting your stash. And if you do have any questions or concerns about clothes moths or other stash harming bugs, leave a comment below. And if you comment in the next few days, I'll try to cover it in my next video. But even if it's after a few days, go ahead and leave your insect questions because I suspect I may end up doing more than one of these Q&A shows. And in my next video, I'll also be talking about using things like lavender, cedar, and mothballs. So leave your comments below and stay tuned for that video coming up. Okay, so today I talked about three important aspects of properly storing your hand knits. One, choosing and preparing the storage area. Two, choosing an appropriate storage container. And three, how to get your hand knits ready for seasonal or longer term storage. And now it's your turn to go down to the comment section and let me know how you store your hand knits. What kind of storage area do you use? A closet? your basement, an attic? And what kind of storage containers do you use? How do you prepare your hand knits for being stored? Did you learn any useful tips in this video? Do you think you might change anything about your storage method? I'm always interested in hearing about your experiences and enjoy reading what you have to say in response to my videos. So please leave a comment, question, idea, or just say hi in the comment section below. And as always, I'll include links to everything I talked about today in the information box right below this video. Just click on show more to open up the box and you'll see all the links there. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you in the next video. And until then, stay smart and have a sparkly week.